Hello, and welcome to the Thrive Mindset Podcast. I am so glad you are here with me. My name is Carrie Dale, and I am your host. I am an entrepreneur, author, podcaster, manifester, and motivator. And I am on a mission to empower you to create the life of your dreams. If you are looking to uplevel your life, relationships, finances, productivity, and success, you have come to the right place. I will share with you tools, resources, strategies, my failures, and my successes that have all helped me achieve the life of my dreams. It is my goal with this podcast to help you see your potential and empower you to create the life of your dreams. So let's get to it. Welcome back to the Thrive Mindset Podcast. I am Carrie Dale, your host. And today I am super excited to share with you a little bit of the Thrive 35 that Tressa Yanakawa and I did back in August. We spent the entire month of August meeting weekly live with women from all around that were wanting to reach their goals. And today, when I was thinking about what I wanted to chat and what I wanted to give to you guys this week, it really, it really has been on my mind that we are at the end of the year, we're in the last quarter, and so many people just kind of look back at the year and go, well, damn, I didn't do this, or I didn't do that, and now there's not time, so, you know, I might as well just wait, because it's not going to happen, and I, you know, I, I don't have enough time before the end of the year, so I might as well just wait and not do it until January, and I want to tell you, stop it. Stop with the, I can't do it now, I have to wait. Stop with the, it's not the first of the year. Stop with the, it's not Monday. Stop with the excuses and just start now. Start right now. You don't have to wait. And so just to show you that and just to give you a little inspiration, I wanna share with you our first week of Thrive 35. I wanna share with you what we started And then I want to tell you that these women, every one of them, every one of them hit their goals. And 35 days is not a lot of time, but every single one of them did. So listen and enjoy, and I hope you learned something. And as always, if you like this podcast, please share it with your friends, like, comment. But most importantly, I just hope you get a little something out of this episode. I am so excited. I'll just talk a little bit about what we're doing tonight. Yes. And I'm excited that, that you are sharing this on in the Facebook group as well um, as on this Zoom with, with our people who are attending. This Thrive 35 came about from you making um, a really sweet invitation for me to be on your podcast and finding a place where we were talking about how do we get these goals? How do we help people get their goals faster? And while I believe in talk therapy, absolutely. And the value of it, I also believe that there's a place for us to be able to very quickly move through any blocks that we are holding that keep us from doing the things that we want to do or the things that we've wanted to do for a long time. And the reason that I've found for me that it's difficult to do that is that those blocks that I'm holding are the things that I believe keep me safe. And safety is different things to all of us. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that tonight because in order to identify the right goals and go for the right things, we have to not be externalizing those. We have to know for ourselves what we want, what we need, and then we can figure out how to get there. But if we're chasing the Lamborghini because we've seen that, and it's not something that is actually important to us, it's just something that we've learned is supposed to be important to us, cool car. If you want to have one, absolutely have one. They're amazing. But is that your truth? Is that your truth? And so as we're getting to this Thrive 35, 35 days to meet your goals, it sounds like it's really fast. And it can be, and it's so, it's so achievable. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. As people are coming in, Carrie, and as you're doing our IT, can you also be just reminding us why you're doing this Hmm. and why this came up for you and why you're passionate about doing this and sharing this? Yeah. 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 So for those of you, well, some of you are on Instagram, some of you are on Facebook right now, some of you are on Zoom. I'm sorry, it's kind of a little all over the place for me, but 
I just love uh, watching people get their dreams and and watching them know, discover that they actually have the ability to bring whatever it is they want into their life. They just need to have a little direction and a little guidance and a little focus and um, sometimes support. And I, it just lights up my life to watch it. I mean, like Jen, you know, we got her, her house this last year and that was so much fun. And that is where this joy kind of started with me not with necessarily with you, Jen, but just in the fact that watching people really draw the things that they're wanting in their lives to them. It just, I find it magical. So that's where that comes from for me. That is magical. And for me, giving back to Um, a community to your community, to our communities um, Mm -hmm. with something that I do in the world and have done for about 25 years. And that may not always be in, in budgetary allowance for everyone. And I've always been a big believer in people, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, um, you matter. And you, you should have access to the best care, the best services, um, the best opportunities, wherever you are and and however you live. And so part of my my wanting to do this is that um, I know that this is my calling, Mm -hmm. that helping people have fixed relationships and, and do what they're here to do. That's my calling. And so being able to share that is, is a gift. And, and I feel like it's all of us who, who live our calling have also the responsibility. Um, So all of us have also the responsibility of sharing that where we can. Yeah. And um, giving people the tools to do the same things that we do. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Let me just start by this. If for those of you that don't know Tressa, Tressa is she's amazing, <laughs> but oh. she is focused on one thing for over twenty years. She uh, fixes hard relationships within ourselves and the spaces between us at work and at home, and as award winning neuroscience based leadership and cultural health keynote speaker and executive coach. She guides the experience and change right now. The choice becomes yours to live your legacy today or wait until it's too late. And I met Tressa this past March at a women's retreat. And um, she was very, like, she just had this major impact in my life. So that is how, like she said in the beginning, that's why I invited her to do the podcast with me. That's why this whole thing has come about is because of something she saw in me and something that we share. And yeah, yeah. The excitement there. Thank you. And big shout out to Mariah Brown, who... um, a retreat that I was helping co-facilitate where we met um, visionary in women's health. And um, yeah, and I'm, I'm grateful to her all the time. So yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. But today, the whole point, the whole thing we're going to work on is figuring out what your goal is and then creating the map to get there because we've got five weeks to do this and you can do it and I'm going to do it and Trust is going to do it and Jen and Allison and Sarah, and we're all going to do this and we're going to be accountable to each other. And I think that we're going to do great things. But for me, the first step is kind of taking time to reflect and that's time to reflect on where you've been. And it can be, you know, this past month, it could be the past six months, it could be a year, but you really take a minute and think about what it is you have done, what you haven't done, what you want to do. And then how does that make you feel? How does that reflection of that time make you, what what emotions come up for you? And just say them or put them in the chat or write whatever it is. But I think your emotions are important for this part. Yeah, I think it's really important if we can all take a moment to do um, what um, my favorite writing coach, Kristen Kay, calls a flyover of your life. And if you can look at where you have been enthusiastic and excited, creative, dreaming into what you want to do, and then you've not done it, you've stopped yourself, you've been stopped, what what has the block been? Is there is there a consistency in what that pattern is about why you don't? And if there is consistency in the pattern about why you don't, write that down. Mm-hmm. But take a moment first to just do that flyover of where have I 
not shown up for myself? Where have I taken care of or overtaken care of other people to the point where I didn't do what I wanted to do or what I know I needed to do for myself? What has that block been? And it could be the caretaking. That could be the block. It could be many things. So just take a moment and really loving yourself compassionately. Take a look at what that is. Alice Ann, I tend to put others' needs first and I need to prioritize my own growth. Yes, yes, yes. And so when excellent job, because when we can get to that at the outset, Alice Ann, when you can name that from the beginning, we can help support you so that that doesn't get in your way over the next 35 days. Mm-hmm. So um, I'll, I'll hold on to that for you, Alice Ann. You don't have to do that as you're meeting your goal. You can so handle it. How does that, how does that thinking about that, how does it make you feel? My guess would be it makes you feel um, sad or resentful or um, maybe disappointed. So lack of joy. Yeah. So it makes you feel like I have let things go that could have really brought me joy. Yeah. Lack of joy for sure. Like maybe even a little guilty, you know, that these are the things that I like right now, my kids are home from college and they're the light of my life, but it's a lot, you know, to, to revert back to being, I've let myself revert back to being this caretaker, but, but yet it's like the thing that brings me joy. But at the same time, I'm letting a lot of other things slip that are important to me. Um, And so then I have this like little guilt, you know, that I'm, I'm neglecting myself, but I'm doing it for what brings me joy. I don't know. Does that make Mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. That's the eternal, especially I'm going to say feminine boundary that we're trying to take care of everything and everyone. And, and now we need to like sip a lot of joy from that. Um, while maybe letting go of some other things that might also bring us joy, but that also brings us joy. And so it feels like enough, right? And and a lot of times it is like spending time with your kids is amazing. And it can absolutely be also frustrating and also disappointing that we're not having the, you know, the, um, the scene in the, in a joyful way that we had imagined we would have that everything's not perfect. So does, I'm I'm curious, Jennifer, from what you're saying, does perfectionism maybe impact you? Is that, is that something that you, okay. Oh, for sure. Okay. So, so you can write that down as something that that's your block that you're holding. And that's something that um, you can let me hold for the next 35 days. And when you catch yourself being in that state of perfectionism, and I get there too, there are times when I make a ton of content and then you will never see it. Mm-hmm. And I work hours on it and it's not perfect. The lighting's not good. I, my, I'm not dressed the way, like whatever it is, you know, all this self-worth stuff that I'm going to say that most of us deal with um, definitely impacts us at every level. And in the past couple of decades, I've worked with people who you would definitely recognize and people who run big companies and, and who do really big things in the world. And they have very similar feelings. They just don't let it stop them all the time. <laughs> but certainly it happens some of the time. We're all human. <laughs> so we're all very similar that way. Sarah, Jen, I, I love that you picked both a negative and a positive to describe your past six months, right? Or a year, because, because the negative, it kind of flows into the next part, right? So the negative is guilt. And then how, and, and how can we change that? Like, how can you get past the guilt? Well, you're funny because your positive was joy, right? And so, and how can you bring more of that into your life? And they kind of, I mean, they actually go, (laughs) in my mind, they go a little hand in hand with how you are going to get over and change the negative of guilt. You're going to find joy in the fact that the kids are here. Mm -hmm. And those are your beautiful girls and they're amazing. And you're going to let go of needing to be a mom and feeling guilty about it and 
<laughs> to doing your things and spending the time doing you and, and what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. 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 But I just want to say the other thing that I like to do um, when I get into that, like self doubt and all those things is I'll ask myself, is that true? Like whatever the statement is that is holding me back, is that true? Because that will really knock me out of that spiral of negativity. Because I, I mean, if I talk to myself, like I'm talking to my friend and I say to myself, Carrie, is that true? You know, this happened. Well, no, it's not. I'm just, you know, making up this condition in my head. I'm just making up the scenario and playing it out when it hasn't even happened. It's not, none of it's true. So, and I love it on the other side too, when you're even thinking about the positive things, is that true? Like, am I doing that? Yeah, I am doing that. I think that the next thing for me is to think now about a time when you felt really great. Like when you felt like you were achieving things and, and what were you doing? Like what habits, what, what things, what steps were you taking in your day? That was creating that for you. I guess I could jump in. When I switched from feeling like, well, it's been a very back and forth between failure and success, mostly with schooling, because I had to learn of that those feelings of starting a new term and then finally getting your grades at the end of the term and whether or not you passed or didn't pass. And when I was 98% of the time I was passing and I was able to hold on to that. What I was doing during those times was absolutely sun up to sundown routine, not saying like everything's going from sun up to sundown, but what are you doing in that time? Whether or not I am going to the gym, whether or not I'm eating right, eating right was, it wasn't always has been a huge part of my being able to stay focused on success. I notice when I focus on the small parts of success, then it allows me more resilience when things aren't exactly the way I want them to be. Yeah. And are you doing those things now? I am. I, I love that you talked about that and routine and habits because that was actually kind of where I was going with it, which is when you do, when you have these routines and you have these habits that are propelling you forward, they're moving you towards your goal versus, and they're making you excited and they're making you happy and they're bringing you the the joy and the focus on where you're headed versus kind of just sitting in that, well, what should I do today? I like, I don't even know what I should do. So next week we'll actually focus on creating those good habits and what you can do. But um, I love just acknowledging that that's part of this and that's part of getting you to where you're headed. I, uh, I actually don't know. I know that Tressa knows this, but Jeff and I take an annual trip in January and we call it our triple R trip. It's our, um, our, it's our reflect, recalibrate and re-energize trip. And I love that so much. And it's really funny. It's actually kind of a funny story because we didn't have it named originally, but that's just my husband. He's a little, he's an engineer. He's kind of quirky. He he <laughs> likes all of his things in a row and he likes names for things. And so one day he said this to me, he's like, so it's our triple R trip. And I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, it's, you know, we're going to go reflect. We're going to recalibrate and we're going to re-energize. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, yeah, I reflect. I totally re-energize. What the heck? Recalibrate? Like that's the word he's choosing? Really? And so I look it up, right? It's perfect. And of course it is, because if you know Jeff, it totally is. But he the, the definition is to re-examine and correct it in a in accord with a new understanding or purpose. So for me, the next part of figuring out where you're going is honestly recalibrating. Like you have to, you've looked at your past, you know what's not working. You, you, you know, maybe we don't have you don't have your goal quite yet, because we're gonna get there, but you you're gonna refocus where you want to go and not stay trapped in the cycle you're in. Entertain me for a minute and close your eyes, please. And I want you to just imagine your best self, like the best version of you. I want you to think about what you're wearing, where you're at, what you're doing, what you're saying, who's with you, what you see. And I don't, you don't have any restrictions. 
no financial restrictions, no time constraints, nothing, just perfect you, the best you. What does she look like? Is she strong? Is she speaking in front of people? Is she doing something that excites her? Okay. So if you can write that down and it doesn't need to be right this moment, but spend some time at some point in the next couple of days, writing that down, writing that vision down, because that's where you ultimately want to be. And that's where you want to head. And it's totally okay. If you aren't sure what that person looked like, if you aren't sure where you were headed, because there's ways to get there. I mean, you just need to think about what excites you. Spend time like this week, spend time paying attention to things you like and talk to your friends. That's the easiest way. For me, Jeff is my mirror. Jeff is the one who will say to me, you know, you love talking about da 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 da. And I don't even catch myself doing it because I love it so much. It's just part of me. I mean, that's a lot of the reason that this, that Thrive came around was because Jeff pointed that out in me that he pointed Mm -hmm. out what I was doing and what I was showing him and our children and our friends. And he's like, you know, this is what you love. So ask. And then another thing you can do is write down the things that give you energy, the things that excite you, that, that when you're doing it, you could keep going for hours. I mean, it could be creating new things or encouraging others, helping people, yoga, whatever it is that gives you energy. And then also write down those things that deplete your energy. Because if your goal is not filling you with energy, you're not going to get it. Because if it's depleting you, you really shouldn't, that shouldn't be where your goal is. That shouldn't be what we're working on this month. And then what is your goal? Does anybody know what they want to do this month? For just this month or the long-term goal? 35 days for these 35 days. 35 days. And so, so take, I mean, if it's, if you have a big one, which I think you do, Sarah, back (laughs) into something you can do these 35 days towards that. So I, I'm like that. I am, I always have these massive big goals and that may be like my year goal or maybe my two-year goal or my five-year goal, but I back them up into pieces that I can accomplish towards that, but in bite-sized pieces. So let's, let's nail down the goal. And there's a a goal map in, in Canva for you. Um, But basically if you want to draw it out, if you don't have it. um, And so there's a a space in the middle for your, for your big goal and, and dream big. Go ahead, Sarah, put the biggest goal there. And then there are other goals around that. It's like a, it's like a little galaxy. So the, the major planets next to your big goal are the very important, the important, the, the kind of important, um, all of those, but go ahead and write it down. And if everybody will do the same thing, and if you're watching on replay, if you will do the same thing now, either on your goal sheet or just take a piece of paper, um, put a circle in the middle or at the top middle and, write down your biggest goal. And when you're done writing that down, or if you want to have it in your brain right now, bring it in front of you, bring it into your system and feel what it is to have achieved that goal and check in with yourself about if that is the real goal, or if that is something that's come from external or something that you've come to believe is, is this the true goal right now? Is it true? And it's a big question. And it's a question that a coach, one of my favorite coaches asked me um, years ago when I said, I want to change the world in all of these different ways. And she said, is it true? Is that really how you want to change the world? And, And I narrowed it down and narrowed it down until I said, oh, you know what? I'm really good at relationships. I want to change the world by helping one relationship at a time. So it really wasn't about like, oh, I need to be like an influencer with 5 million followers. Like that really, it doesn't light me up or turn me on at all. And if I had that, it's overwhelming to me to think about maintaining that. That's not where my, that's not where my passion is. So really ask yourself, is this true? Is this my internal self-aware truth? And if it's not, 
change, modify, start over with your goal. That's all okay. What else can we be aware of, Carrie, as we're we're doing this very important piece of setting this goal besides knowing that it's always malleable. We can change it. Yeah. I I, I just want to go back though. I think it, I think you have to feel good about it. I think it can't, you, you can't feel negative about it. You can't, you can't fall into that spiral because then the worry is going to, over, is going to be more than than the positive, than the excitement, than the, and the worry is actually going to be the direction you go instead of towards the goal, because we move towards where our, where our attention is. And so if our intention is to do something and we say, oh, so I'll give you mine because mine's a biggie. I, I want to take what Jeff and I do in January, but I want to turn it into a retreat for other people. That is what I want. I love that experience so much and I enjoy travel and I enjoy the whole, all the aspects, but I, that's what I want to do. I want to create that. I want to create a triple R retreat that's for other people, not just me. And with that, I can get super caught up in the fear of, I don't know how to do that. I don't know what to do. I, yeah, I can, I can get caught up in all the worries and the negativities about how, what, how long is that going to take? Like, is this really realistic? Like people even come, like I can do all those things, but if I go down that road, then I'm going to stay stuck and I'm not going to actually get anything done. Whereas if I can focus on, no, I'm like excited about this. I don't know the answers today, but you know what I'm going to find out? You know, I'm not going to say that in 35 days, we're going to have a retreat. I'm just going to say that I will be on the road (laughs) to having created that and working on that. And that's what I, that's where I'm going to focus. So. Right. Yeah. That's exciting. And, and that brings up these, these side goals, right? So the, the very important, the milestones that you want to reach, um, what is very important to you to reach your goal? What is important to you to reach your goal? What is kind of important to you to reach your goal? And what is an also like, I would also like to have this along with reaching this particular goal. So as it relates to this goal. So if you have your goal in front of you, now you're going to look at what is very important and write down a milestone that will indicate that you are on your way. Something that would say, oh, I'm achieving this right now, or I'm working on this right now. This is a very important milestone or step for me to achieve this bigger goal. So it ends up being like a constellation. There's nothing linear about goal success. There are lots of starts and stops. There are lots of mini failures. There are lots of mini successes and big successes. There's nothing that says, first you do this, then you do this, then you do this, and everything's going to work out just fine. It's It's a constellation. So we have little milestones and bigger milestones on the way to our bigger goal. And anytime we're working on our goal and we can be working towards this goal every single day, every time we do something to work towards our goal, we're getting direction. So if something, if a door closes, you're like, oh, okay, that's not the direction to get to my goal. So now I'm redirected. How do I, how do I get there? And it is totally possible. This has happened to me several times that my goal becomes something different or a modification of but it's better than what I dreamt up for myself because I dreamt it up from a place of the self-worth wound. Even though I think I'm like rising above it, I'm past that. I've done all the work. I do personal work. A lot of times we'll set our goal within a box and there might be more for us out there. Jennifer, anything you want to share about goal, um, moderate goal, micro goals? Well, that's the tricky part. I feel like my challenge is what is my goal? And I've actually struggled with this for a while. And it like is is bigger than that. What is my purpose? What is my why? You know, the really big, important question. And I have a hard time getting quiet and listening to myself. And when I've set goals in the past, I always hit my goals because I set goals that are one attainable, sure. But also I'm not going to tell you about my goal unless I know that I am going to put all my effort into it and that it will be attained because I'm not like my husband's way more of a dreamer and he'll just talk and talk and talk. And he can talk about the same thing 
you know, over and over. But if I'm going to, if I'm going to tell you about my dream or my goal, I have to make sure that it is so important to me that I am. So I think part of my challenge is just realizing, you know, what is my goal? Sure. I set little goals all the time. And, um, but you know, what is my bit? What is my why? I think that's sort of my goal in -hmm. this process is to figure out what is my, yeah, what is my why? What is my purpose? I love that so much, Jennifer. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's a vulnerable, vulnerable place to be and yeah. to, to share. So thank you for that. And this is the most vulnerable place. So this goal setting, you know, maybe I want to do 50 push-ups, but I use that as a cover to not have to address my actual goal. So I'm going to challenge you, Jennifer, um, that we do oftentimes know what our calling is, what our what our purpose, if you want to call it, that is what our passion is, what we love to do. That's not always going to be how we make our living. All right. So, so we have to distinguish if how, how we're going to use this goal and how we're going to use this knowledge of, of what our what our purpose is, what our passion is, what we're here to do. And I think most of us know what that is. It's just so scary. Because like for me, I went and got degrees. I made sure I had letters behind my name. I did all the things um, so that I was legitimate in public when really all I've ever wanted to do is understand and help people with communication and connection. But how could I do that without having the, um, the authority to do it was how I was raised. So getting away from that authority to do and just being the best that I can possibly be at it has been really scary. So I kind of touched on it. My degrees are in that area. Like I worked in that area. I've done consulting in that area. And then when I fully embraced it, it all just opened up. So sometimes we nibble around what what our calling is, what our passion is. When we fully claim it and own it is when we can actually start getting the milestones and getting the goals. Yeah, I think that's so true. I think I probably don't even want to put it into writing, you know? So do it. I'll work work on that this week. How about right now? We've got about (laughs) 15 more minutes or so. Okay. By the end of the 15 minutes, Jennifer, have it written down because here's what happens. I'll do it later becomes many distractions. And this is, this is the pattern. And all of a sudden we're middle age and we're like, Oh my God, when I was 18, 21, 23, 37, 45, I said I was going to do this thing. I've always known I needed or wanted to do this thing. You know what? It's been this long. It can wait another day, another week, another year. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're at the time of our lives where we're going, oh my gosh, the the only regrets I have are that I didn't. So let's move forward without those regrets. Go on your journey. Try to have a goal written down, even if like Jennifer, you just have to like take it from your core and like plop it on the piece of paper, just see if it's going to work, you know, see how you feel about it. It doesn't have to stick there or be stuck there, but get something down on paper today so that we have something to work with. And then if you feel um, like you're, you're wanting to, you're in consent with sharing that, please do. Yeah. And Jen... I can't wait to see what your your goal is. Just and I actually can't wait to see everyone's goal. But I I just love how vulnerable you're being right now because I asked Tressa. This was me at the beginning of the year. <laughs> this was me knowing what I wanted and already kind of moving towards that in my own little ways, quietly, like super quietly. And now I yeah, like how far you've come already. I know, right? I know, and it's. Mm-hmm. It's embracing it. I, I mean, I'll, I'll share this quickly with you. Last night, it's full moon, right? And I don't know how everybody feels about full moon, but to me, I love, I love new beginnings with full moons. They, they're always for me. They're always the time to let go of something and then embrace something. And I'm sure, as women, we can all relate to this. But I, not only do I struggle like with friends judging or whatever, but I really, really struggle with caring what family thinks, right? And caring, and not that I don't care and not that I won't always care, but I really struggle with that judgment of 
okay, well, Carrie's gone all woo woo crazy. Like what the hell is she doing now? Like that is a, that has been a big thing for me. And I can honestly say that last night I was like, I am done with it. Like I am done. I mean, I, this is out there. They can all see it. You know, all of them can. And I, and I had been kind of careful about where I was sharing things and whatever. And I'm like, forget it. I'm just, I'm putting this out. Like it's, it's important to me. I think it's so important to me. So I'm going to stop worrying about it. <laughs> and so I get it, Jen. It's scary. Like it's yeah. so scary. And also <laughs> just knowing you um, and, and, and knowing like that partnership with your husband. And you made the comment also about Michael being able to just talk and do all the things and whatever. And you, you're his partner, like you're his support, right? You're always doing this and, and it's time for you to be you and find you. Yeah. I think that's, and I think that's true for everyone, for all of us, you know, Sarah, as you're saying, like, I know what my goal is. I just don't really want to share it because, right. And so the, because becomes the excuse and the reason to get the goal. So because if I fail, I would have already said that I was going to do this thing and now I haven't made it. Or because if I'm successful, then I have to deal with being successful with it or whatever, whatever your rationale is for that. But in this five weeks, we're going to go deeper in to what's holding the root of what holds you back. And as your accountability partners in this, um, everyone who's joining and being a part of this um, on Telegram, Carrie and I will be there regularly for you. And that doesn't mean that we're saying, remember, you're not supposed to do this. It means, hey, I'm stuck with this. Hey, I keep coming back to this. Hey, I noticed this. And, and then we can work through those things so you don't have to deal with them, at least for the 35 days and maybe not in the future if that's what your choice is. Yeah, for sure. Well, we have like eight more minutes. So a few more things I just wanted to touch on. And that the next part is the re-energizing, right? So in order to get your goals, you have to you have to keep your vibration high. Like I said earlier, you can't be like, I want this, but constantly focusing on the negative of what that is because you're worrying about it. You know, constantly, I I want to, I want to create this retreat, but I'm so worried that I'm going to fail. Like you, you have to, you have to be pointed towards the good, not the bad. So think really hard this week about what you can do to keep those positives up, to keep that vibration up, to keep that energy in a, in a positive way because that's what's going to draw it to you. And then write out one thing, one affirmation that you can put on a post-it note, you can put on a mirror, you can put on a whiteboard, you can put wherever you are. I mean, I have affirmations all over my dang house, but I really want you to write out one that during these 35 days that you can look at every day, multiple times a day, that is going to remind you like why you're doing this, what, you know, it could be, oh, I love this. I pull, I have an affirmation deck because I, this is just me. And this is the one I pulled today, which I love. And it was just today I'm a magnet for good things to happen to me. So whatever it is, I am the one on my board in front of me says I'm creating the life of my dreams. The one over here says I'm enough. Like I have them everywhere, but if there's just one that you can write that resonates with you, do that, please. Cause it will really help it. It is silly as it is. It, it just it helps. And then make a commitment, like a make a commitment to do this. Make the commitment to yourself. It's not to anybody else. This is for you. And then the last thing I'm going to say is your homework. Because, and you're going to laugh, at least those of you, well, you all, I think you all know me well enough by now um, that I think gratitude is everything. And I believe in having a gratitude practice. And I believe that that's one of those things that will keep you positive and working towards your goal. Because when you are grateful and you are in that mindset, it's really hard to be negative. It's really hard to be upset. It's really hard. I mean, when I get mad, like my husband or the kids or whatever, it's hilarious when I start going down my head, okay, well, I'm really grateful for Mm, this. And I start doing these things and how quickly I can get over being mad (laughs) because I'm thinking about all the good instead. So I want you to start a gratitude practice, which will involve this. Okay. Every day, I want you to list out 10 things that you are grateful for from the day before. Even if the day was bad, even if it sucked, even if it's as little as your cup of coffee or your dog sitting next to you 
or maybe the hummingbirds we saw. I don't care. It could be little, but it also put the big things down. Like if there was actually great big things or great, you know, moments, remember that and think about that. And then after you have those 10 things, I want you to write one sentence about your goal. And I want it to be in the past tense. And I want it to be, I did, or I accomplished, or I blah, blah, blah. For me, my sentence will be, I created a triple R retreat. That will be my sentence, but it's in past tense. It's not, I'm going to, I've done it every day. And, and you can even use the question, how did I manage to create this very successful triple R retreat so that your brain starts to solve for that? And so another part of the homework is get your goal written down. If you need help refining that, reach out on Telegram and, and we'll definitely help you do that. Ask it in that question of how did I, how did I become this? How did I accomplish this? So that your brain starts to work on that this week. And when we meet again, we can start filling out all of those milestones. If you haven't, you're welcome to work ahead. So for our overachievers, feel free to work ahead and also come back to your goal every day, as many times as you possibly can, maybe make it your screensaver for this amount of time so that you're revisiting that and remembering that this is who you are. And this is what you're working toward. And you're going to start noticing that you're solving for this already. Yeah. Yeah. For I sure. wanted to take a moment to say, uh, Carrie, thank you. And I'm proud of you for stepping into this when over the last so many months, as I've been kind of sitting back watching and observing, this is just something I do, um, that you having enough, uh, enough centeredness to, to decide that you were going to do this. And I was able to go on and see, I was, uh, I, I had the opportunity to be inspired by what you're doing and the way that you directly affect everyone around you. It may not be your family, but you're going to inspire and touch each individual person that you're supposed to. Yeah, I know that. And you know what? Actually, I think it will be my family, but <laughs> they'll come around. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I and I shouldn't say, I, I, just so I'm clear, because I'm sure there's some that are watching. I know that there's a lot of support too. I, I And mm-hmm. I am so grateful for all of that. And yeah. Yeah. But I just, I just want to make a point that I just know that we, we do, we can get stuck in that negative. So other than that, make sure you go into the telegram group. And if you're struggling, just send me an email and I'll help you through that. I just sent a message in telegram to get us going. That says here with you, let's get your goals, reach out with any questions, thoughts, blocks, successes, anything. We are here for you for these five weeks. And I will tell you that we are so excited to be doing this and um, and please participate because the, the extent that you participate to is the extent that you will have the experience. Wonderful. Thank you. We are so grateful for you being here and stepping into your goals. This is challenging. This is hard. This is confronting. This is all the things. This is a, this is a journey in self-awareness, self-worth, self-love and, and honoring what I think is our responsibility um, to each other to to do the thing we're here to do in the world. Thank you again to Tressa Yanakawa for joining me on this venture of Thrive 35. And I really hope that the words today and the, the tools shared were things that you can implement into your life now and that you can use to, to really go after your goals and not wait until the first of the year. And if you're listening to this and you're wishing, damn, I should have done Thrive 35 when Carrie and Tressa were doing it. Well, it's not too late. I have a monthly Dreams to Reality group where several of these women have continued on. They are continuing on their journey. They are continuing to crush their goals. So join us, join the fun. Visit thrivemindset.io and sign up today. I look forward to having you. And above all else, I believe in you and you can manifest the life of your dreams.